Hello and welcome. Digital transformation or helping companies go digital has become one of the biggest opportunities in the IT services and consulting space. To understand more about this and how large consulting companies like Capgemini are handling this, responding to it, and indeed taking on this big opportunity, I'm joined by Thierry Delaporte, COO of Capgemini. Uh, Thierry uh, Delaporte, thank you very much for speaking with us. A uh, very broad question first. Uh, you, amongst the larger consulting companies, have been investing heavily in helping your own teams become digital ready. And, and uh, you have 211,000 people working for you, so I'm assuming this effort would have uh, touched tens of thousands of people, if not more. What has been the outcome and what has been the result so far? Yeah, Govin, we are in an industry where uh, if you're not keeping up with the evolution of technology, you become rapidly irrelevant. What has happened over the last year has been with what we call, if you like, the digital wave, has completely changed uh, the priorities in the way the technology is being spent by the companies uh, 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 to transform themselves uh, um, over the next years. So our priority has been to continue to stay focused on what was going to be the new, what's coming next, where, where are the, you know, remember that we are about technology, but it's about innovation. And so staying close to what's going on in the market, what is being, you know, uh, 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 new and impact of it in the way it can boost the performance of companies is critical. What we call the new is about digital, cloud, data, cybersecurity. Therefore, the need for us was to rapidly uh, rotate our portfolio of offerings in this area, in this space where we know the demand is going to accelerate over the years. And indeed, over the last years, we've had a strong if not super strong growth, double digit growth in what we call this new digital and cloud uh, around the world. So once you've said that, we are a people business. And so the necessity to get our people current with technology evolution is absolutely critical. In India, you said it, 110,000 people, uh, which is more than 50% of the entire group the most fantastic uh, power force of Capgemini, you know, huge concentration of talent, was absolutely critical that this population right. be current and, you know, focused on the new technologies. Right. So we've invested in hiring talent, in training talent, in upskilling people towards those technology. And then let's be, let's be clear, it's exciting for the people to learn about technologies, the potential of it. It's actually fun for them. And I can see in the way, you know, our people are engineers. They are technologies. They love what's new. They love to play with uh, the, the, the potential of technologies. Uh, so for them, investing their time into learning more about what's happening in cybersecurity, what's happening in data or cloud, is nothing but you know exciting, right? So, uh, forty-five percent of your revenue now is cloud and uh, uh, is, is is cloud and digital, and that's grown twenty percent, and much more than every other sector or most other sectors. But on the other hand, business process outsourcing, which is an area that we are all familiar with, sitting in out of India, ha has slowed down. So, why is that? Is that because of specific uh, geographies or business process outsourcing is very important? Uh, part of our business. And, and this and is just, if I may supplement, this is not a question aimed only at Capgemini. This is, I'm just trying to understand what's happening in the environment as a whole, yeah. I'll tell you. Mm. Business process outsourcing is being transformed by the power of automation. Mm -hmm. Automation is about, you know, how can you improve, streamline, accelerate, you know, do your different processes via technology. Automation is therefore, in some cases, reducing the need for individuals, which somehow is impacting the revenue itself. But it's the reality. So we are going through this transformation. We have engaged, you know, several months ago, a real shift of our portfolio in business process outsourcing. We have a strong base around uh, accounting and finance. We really have a leadership position in there. Mm -hmm. 
What we are doing is accelerating uh, our investment around intelligent process automation and around digital supply chain. So those are two areas where we are shifting our you know, attention, growing our capabilities, upskilling our people, and rapidly will find growth and go back up and again in, in right. growth. So when, when you talk about growth in digital and cloud, could, could you illustrate that for us through the eyes of a, a big client or a business sector or an industry that you work with, for instance, you just uh, said finance is a big one. Yes, for sure. Banks. And how that has changed uh, uh, for me, the consumer and, and my touch points. It has changed it completely. Mm -hmm. Okay, take a step back five years ago. You go in a bank, you are in front of you know, the director of the branch. He's asking you your bank account. He, you can give him his, your name, he doesn't know you. He's king on, your com on his computer, get some detail about you, probably see your balance position, has no clue who you are, doesn't know who you like, doesn't know what you need. How can he push products to you? The obsession of the banks has been, in terms of you know, managing their customer experience, improving it, is how can I empower my employees to be able to be, you know, in, you know uh, 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 get the information they need in order to provide and have an intelligent you know, discussion with their customers every time they see them. So that has completely changed the interaction. But for banks, digital transformation has also been about how can I streamline my processes? How can I do that in the back office or behind you know, the customer interaction processes, we have simple processes. Banks are dealing with immense challenges coming from the level of complexity. And so digital transformation is about, you know, driving, you know, uh, uh, more leaner processes, less expensive, more efficiency, less errors, better quality. And if you look ahead, w w what are the kind of challenges that you see for both customers and for yourself in delivering, let's say, more precise and fine-tuned offerings of digital transformation products and services? Well, the digital transformation will always be about, you know, what is the business challenge we are trying to address? Two, what kind of data are we exploiting? How do we leverage all the data? How do we make them, you know, good quality? Three, do we have the people in the company, the leadership alignment, the clear strategy identified in order to drive this transformation? And four, you know, in the way we deploy our transformation, the digital transformation, can the organ entire organization deal with the massive change management required by the transformation? And, and what's the answer to that question? Are they able to ch are they able to adapt? And obviously they are adapting, but I'm, I'm sure there are people who are not able to and finding it difficult. They all are uh, uh, facing the limits of what can employee uh, accept and deal with in terms of change at any moment in time. So yes, companies that have you know taken the challenge to really drive a significant digital transformation, or let's say to, to leave the digital world aside, to really embark on the transformation of their business model in order to respond to the eruption of disruptors in their own industry. These companies know that they will need to put in the right positions the people that have completely uh, 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 accepted the necessity to transform this organization. Where, do we, where are we in terms of you know, IT uh, uh, setup? What is the level of maturity of the team? Do we have a clear articulation of our digital strategy? Technology is an enabler, but technology is not the transformation itself. Right. 
And you know, the financial services sector again is facing a lot of competition world over from young startups, fintech companies. Uh, they're also getting the funding. So, how are you in this battle with your traditional, uh, almost legacy banking clients? Are you are you able to help them along uh, in in traditional ways? Are you yourself trying to become like more startup? So I tell you one thing, uh, Govin. Five years ago, about five years ago, the banks were looking at the startups. You know seeing them growing fast and grabbing market share but being very small and therefore not so relevant for them. And then, you know, year after year, they've seen the impact and the potential of innovation coming from these startups. So they've started to connect with them. But there are millions of startups around the world, as you know. And it's difficult for the company to clearly pick the ones that will have the impact they need, and able to deal with scale and security challenges uh, that is required to be, you know, implemented in a bank. Capgemini is here to help the banks, our clients, to navigate and work with all these startups. So we have an ecosystem of startup ourselves. We've clearly identified for each part of the business, whether it's in capital market, in payments, in cards, or in uh, you know, uh, uh, asset management, looking at different uh, um, streams or, or services, what are the right uh, partners, the right companies that can really respond to their business challenges. Then we are working with these startups in order to see how we can together build differentiated solutions. We have at the same time the understanding of this world of startups. We know better than anybody those clients. We provide access to those clients to those startups. We are helping them dealing with scale. So this ecosystem between startups, SI companies like us mm. and cl our clients, you know, we need each other. Together, we really can build some, you know, significant uh, piece of transformation. Right, and in, 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 in some ways, that's also saying that, uh, you know, the, the big brands and the, even, this, even if they are legacy companies still have an edge in this marketplace, and that's really the opportunity versus reality. The reality is that uh, not all startups will overtake uh, uh, legacy companies overnight as maybe some people thought they would. The reality is that startups have, you know, an, a, a, a huge potential often in very narrow uh, uh, niche, if you like. And they have two challenges, if not three. One is around scale, one is around security, and one is around access to client and large clients, credibility. Also, uh, the reality of startups is one day they are on top of, you know, they are leading the way, and, you know, the next day, they are running behind because a new company is coming and you know claiming, claiming leadership. So we also allow, because we are product agnostic, we don't own products, so we are dealing with these ones and these different partners, we allow the different, our clients, the banks in this case, or insurance companies, or any other sector, to not be dependent from those startups. If one technology is being overtaken by another one, we can always adjust right. and work with them to stay on top of the competition. Right, uh, last question. So you've acquired a lot of companies uh, on close to half a billion euros of acquisitions uh, in, in the last year. Yep. So w what are those acquisitions like and how are they helping you take your own uh, vision forward as an organization who's working for your clients? Yeah. Um, Every year, we want to allocate pretty much 50% of our cash to acquisitions, Bolton acquisitions, allowing us to accelerate in spaces where we see high demand. It can be, you know, in the hot markets, you know, America being one, you know, significant market, Germany another one. It can be, you know, specific sectors. It could be financial services, it could be automotive sector, it could be utility sector around specific technology. We are just finalizing the acquisition of a cybersecurity mm -hmm. player in America. Um, last year we acquired Liquidub, you know, a leader in customer engagement in America with very strong presence in financial service 
mm. and retail sectors. And that's how we are continue, we continue to complement, if you like, our arsenal of, uh, of weapons uh, 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 around those uh, you know, priorities around digital and cloud. And that's where most acquisitions will happen in the, this year as well, and I'm yes. assuming. And, yes. and are these mostly, I mean, are these globally, in, I mean, agnostic in terms of geographies and so on? Well, you know, there are s geographies. We know that we want to maintain a balance between geographies. We have a clear view per geographies on the ones where, you know, we have room for growth, where we can, where versus the ones where we are already in a leadership position. And I mentioned North America as an obvious uh, place, but India as well, where, you know, uh, there's a real potential for us to continue to strengthen our position of leadership as, uh, you know, as a transformation partner for our clients. Right, uh, that's a good note to end on. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Mr. Delaporte. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.